we randomly scatter them and the nodes themselves broadcast the, their key IDs. And when they noticed collision between the key IDs, they knew that the nodes knew that they have shared keys with their neighbors. So very simple protocol that requires absolutely no security um, would enable us to establish key connectivity, no third party interaction, no administrator interaction, just self-organization. Okay, so this is supposed to be a, a useful feature. If you want to extend the network, you simply draw, I mean, you simply uh, throw more, uh, more, more sensors uh, that were loaded with those randomly drawn keys from the pool that I was talking about. Very easy extension. Again, no third party interaction, no trusted, uh, no trusted administrator. Okay, now, um, so imagine three neighborhoods like the ones that, you've, that you see here. And notice what happens. Um, the, the solid lines between sensors represent shared keys. And of course, the dashed blue lines uh, point out to the fact that some sensor nodes will have shared keys with nodes in neighborhoods with which they cannot communicate in one hop. Remember, the sensors communicate via radio broadcast. Uh, within limited ranges, say 30 meters, right, or 50 meters. And I could end up having, a, I'm a node, and I could end up sharing a key with a node which is far away with which I cannot communicate, but I do have a shared key. So those are the blue lines um, shown in the figure. Now imagine that node 3 in a neighborhood I is actually being captured by an adversary. In other words, an adversary picks up this sensor and what it can do with it, uh, the first thing that it can do, it can take it apart and download its state. And in fact, download its state on a replica. It can replicate the node with Radio Shack equipment. So it builds a clone. As a matter of fact, instead of building a clone, it builds actually two clones. And it turns out that the two clones which are being built can be inserted in neighborhoods J and neighborhoods K, the left neighborhoods on the slide. Why? Because node 3 happened to have had shared keys with those two neighborhoods. And somehow the adversary figured that out. How did the adversary figure it out? Well, the adversary listened to the first protocol in which key IDs were being exchanged and noticed that, that this um, node 3 had a collision in terms of the key IDs between it and some node in neighborhood J. And the same thing, notice the collision in the IDs of keys between node 3 and uh, some other node in neighborhood K. So obviously he knew that there were shared keys there, and that's a neighborhood where the adversary chose to insert <coughs> the replicas. Now if the adversary doesn't know where the key collision is, the adversary needs to do a little more work and basically uh, replicate more nodes and throw them randomly in the network and in fact some of them would connect to the network. Okay, so now what have we got? Now we've got a situation in which some nodes of the network are uh, legitimate nodes and some nodes are adversarial nodes and they are all connected. In some sense you could view this as being essentially a cancer growing in the network we get these uh, this nodes which are clearly under the control of the adversary that could in some sense bypass most of the protections of the network. In fact, uh, one of the things that could happen if you have an intrusion detection system here at work that's threshold based, <coughs> then these replicated nodes could actually have uh, abnormal, exhibit abnormal behavior but distribute abnormal behavior among the multiple copies so as to stay under the threshold. And this is a particularly egregious uh, thing. Clearly, the replicas could block legitimate transmissions, could modify legitimate transmissions, this replica under adversary control, and could also partition the network. So for example, in, in this uh, picture, uh, the, the three red lines uh, show communication between the three collaborating nodes to block the traffic being forwarded through them. Okay, now how is this adversary different from what we've seen before? The standard adversary definition that, uh, that we had uh, to date 
It's called the Dole Viao adversary. This is sort of a generalization of the old Needham Schroeder adversary. So what's the Dole Viao adversary about? You see it occasionally in literature, and we all think that it's magic, but it's actually three things. The first thing is that the Dole Viao adversary controls the network operation. What that means is that you have a man in the middle everywhere. Between any two links, you have a man in the middle. Right? That's the first characteristic. So, so it, the Dole Viao adversary could read, replay, forge, block, modify, insert messages anywhere in the network. Second aspect of the adversary is that uh, the Dolevia adversary can send and receive any message to and from any legitimate principle. Or can send a message to and receive a message from any legitimate principle. Third is that the Dolevia adversary could be actually a registered user in the network. So it could be a legitimate principle of the network. However, the Dolevia adversary cannot do a number of things. So for example, it cannot discover another legitimate principle secret. In other words, if there is a faraway node or even a close node to the adversary, the, the Levy adversary cannot go inside the node and say, give me the keys and obtain the secret keys, for example, passwords or any other crypto keys the node might have. It cannot do that. It cannot capture legitimate principle nodes and modify their inputs, for example. And it cannot modify the network topology and the trust topology in the network. So for example, the Dolevia adversary cannot do what we just showed on the previous slides. It cannot replicate, capture, and replicate nodes. Okay. So in some sense, <coughs> that instance of the adversary described on the previous slide is more powerful than the Dolevia adversary. In fact, there are some arguments um, which indicated that the kind of adversary we might have in a sensor network might actually be only different from Dolevio, not more powerful. And the reason why people argue that it's different is because they argue that the adversary would want to behave in a stealthy manner. In other words, would not want to exercise more power than a legitimate node, a legitimate sensor. And consequently, since sensors operate only by, via radio broadcast, you had the atomicity of broadcast meaning that you could not block, for example, selectively other sensors' transmission if the adversary had to be stealthy. That happens <clears throat> not to be the case in practice. And the idea is that a node, an adversarial node, can always broadcast, can always be in the neighborhood of selected nodes and broadcast at half power, for example. So the, the interference that would introduce that would be introduced by the adversary would not cover a large area, but would cover only the area where the selected nodes or node would be. So technology enables us to do that relatively easily. And also, by the way, technology also enables us for this adversarial node to jam selectively and block transmission by not following the CSMACD protocol. Right? So uh, a, a node basically running the protocol in software or firmware could modify that and not back off and completely jam transmission in a fairly legitimate manner, actually. All right, so, so now the question is, uh, what do you do about uh, this new adversary, at least this in, in this instance? So um, there are a couple of solutions that, that um, have been proposed to detect the presence of an, an adversary that re replicates nodes. And what are those solutions? The first one is actually a naive solution, one that doesn't work in practice, not, certainly not in a sensor network. So the naive solution goes as follows. Suppose that each node has an ID which the node cannot change. And suppose that each node um, has a set of other nodes as neighbors that it knows about. And it certainly knows about because it exchanged keys with the neighbors. <coughs> so suppose that each node would be required periodically to sign its ID and the list of neighbors with which it has shared keys and transmit this message, broadcast this message everywhere in the network, periodically.